Hey, Ty here. So welcome to the VRTech channel. So this one is very, very interesting because we're talking about probably the first headsets built directly with human brain interface integrated on it. So that means that the priority of this headset is not actually to interact with controllers, stuff like that, but actually using your own brain. If this sounds like sci-fi to you, well, because it is. So let's discover together Cognition 1 or Connection 1. And of course, why it's so interesting, why on the channel we're gonna see very, very soon something about brain-human interface in person. Let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Punky Cows. Hertz is on the brink of a collapse, depleted of resources. In a race to find new search of secret energy buried deep in the ground, a corporation unleashed a worse-scale pandemic that killed the almost entire population and it's resurrecting them in zombies. Follow the story of John and Jim in their journey to understand and stop the disaster. This arcade zombie game brings you in many various locations with two different modes, story and survival. So, advance in zombie infested level, defend your position from hordes of zombies with a variety of weapons like shotgun, sniper rifle, grenade launcher, pistols and different assault rifles. Build your defenses and mostly survive to unveil what happened. Pancake House is available on Steam VR and PSVR for $14.99, so check it out in the description below. And thanks again to Pancake House for sponsoring this video. All right, here we are. So this one was announced on November 30th, and I don't really know how I miss it because this is kind of a, a big thing for VR and AR. Over here, we're talking about an AR headset, so augmented reality. That means that you're not gonna be completely immersed in experience, but it's gonna be used to have holograms in front of you and helping you to interact actually with people in the real world. And that's actually the focus of this headset, to have interaction for people that are not really able to have an interaction. And the very interesting thing over here, what makes it a very beyond thinking a headset is actually the brain human interface used for interaction. Because Cognition, or Cognition One is the first headset to integrate the human interface out of the box. So that means that to provide input, to create inputs, you're not gonna need any end tracking movement or stuff like that, selecting with buttons or controllers. But what you're gonna do is just to think about something and well, that is gonna interpret your thinking and use it directly to express an input and stuff like that. And the very interesting thing that is also integrated with Alexa for it. So that means that you can use automation directly with the headset. But this is not really the main focus of it. It's not just like, a, you know, an portable assistant. There's such a deeper root in this headset and that's why I think this is very interesting. Also, not just for uh, the VR and AR ecosystem, but also for assistive technologies that uh, they kind of lack behind, let's be honest, when it comes to technology. For accessibility purposes, we always see uh, technologies that are kind of uh, old technology reused for that purpose. Instead, over here, we have a real forward thinking using technologies that are not in the market yet to help people to have a better interaction in life. And that's really the power of AR and VR over here to give experiences and possibilities that will not be unlocked unless you're using this kind of technology. So the focus here was for people with cellular paralysis and ALS, and in a way to make them able to speak in something that otherwise they wouldn't be able to do. So how does it work? Well, through AI, they're gonna be able to compose uh, phrases, uh, conversation, and thing, selecting the words, not just, of course, looking at them, but actually thinking about what they wanna say. And this company actually is a pending patent to uh, recognize and predict, of course, the conversation that the person wants to have. It is such a, a super useful thing. And another very interesting thing that on this headset, you don't just have the screen to see, of course, uh, all the words that you have to select and of course the conversation that you're gonna have, but you have different kinds of interaction. First of all, the headset, of course, as a speaker, so it can talk for you. In the moment that you talk, well, the headset is gonna talk to the person in front of you. But if you want something quieter, something easier, maybe the voice is not super understandable, you can always project what you're saying on the external screen. So it's like to have a real captions uh, at that point. When talking to a person, you're gonna be able to see what the person is saying and of course, reply. So as they say, everything is to reduce the lag between intention and outcome. Now we all know that brain human interface can be a little 
invasive uh, sometime as a technology. Uh, sometimes you have to shave, sometimes you have to put the electrodes on, on your head and stuff like that. Instead here, it seems like you have uh, a very easy way to use it without uh, shaving, without uh, doing weird things with your body. You just put it on and that should work to have, of course, a better interaction and ease to use uh, for the people that need the most. And if this is not a cool mission, well, uh, what it is. Now with so many different human brain interfaces in the past, and that's gonna be a kind of a future, uh, not just for accessibility, that is a big thing, actually, and I'm glad they're working in this direction, this headset that are doing just this. But in the future, we're gonna use it also for our regular VR and AR interaction. Um, actually, it's very interesting because I'm gonna receive very, very soon, I'm actually in talk with one of the companies doing uh, human brain interaction, it and done to add to uh, our headset. And I'm gonna test it for you uh, so we can see actually if we can use uh, my brain to control my character or move around or select things uh, that sounds very creepy uh, when you think about it and uh, yeah it kind of is uh, but I can really wait to try it for you and tell you if hey uh, maybe it's a good accessory to have so subscribe for that to so don't miss it of course but we say that we saw a very interesting CTR lab uh, bracelet uh, actually, uh, that company got acquired by Facebook two years ago. So if you want your brain to be read by Facebook, well, uh, we are in a good point over there. But uh, the interesting thing in this technology was like, it was reading, uh, not really the movement of your hands, the movement of your arm, your movements of your legs or stuff, wherever you put this bracelet on, but was actually reading the intention from the brain. Because at the end of the day, in a very simple and ignorant way, well, the brain communicates with the electric stimulus. So if you can read uh, the electricity that arrives to the different part of the body, well, uh, you get the result. So uh, that was very interesting because without even moving your fingers. So think about this for accessibility, that's absolutely awesome. And think about this also for us in the future, they're gonna be able to control our uh, characters and stuff just thinking about it. If you wanna walk in VR, you don't have to move the stick anymore, but you just think about, hey, uh, let's go over there, let's walk and you're gonna walk, let's run and you're gonna run. Uh, let's see, uh, move our hands and well, those hands fingers are gonna move exactly in the same time without relying on cameras that we know that sometimes can be a little spotty. So yeah, human brain interface is something that we're gonna have for sure in the future of VR and AR, and I'm glad that companies like Cognition are already working on something like this for people in need, for real, and then, well, all of us are gonna be able to benefit as well of the progress that they're doing over there. But here I have it guys, I really wanted to share because I really liked the idea of this headset. I think that it's great uh, what they are doing over there. I can wait to see it in action, of course. And at the same time, I can wait to see the human brain interface be used uh, in VR and AR yeah, because they kind of like perfectly fit over there. But let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you ready to control everything with just your brain and uh, or you think or you're really a little creeped out by it <laughs> let me know in the comment below and as always guys if you like the video like if you did like to dislike subscribe to the channel for our VR tech and if you really love the channels the join button down there little down first